Andrew Maine, more Ask Mains. First one is from Erin Batello. She writes, anyone who knows you knows you love space exploration and space technology. Do you think you'll write a story based on that? She says this knowing that I'm probably sitting next to a SpaceX hat or some paraphernalia like that. I love space. I love space technology and I love science fiction. And I've got a lot of ideas for science fiction stories. The question is, can I tell one that somebody who would never pick up a science fiction book enjoy and find engaging? You take a movie like Gravity. Gravity's great. Gravity's science fiction, but gravity doesn't feel like science fiction. Gravity feels like a human drama. And some people even said, no, it's not science fiction because we have space stations and stuff, whatever. It's science fiction. It's a science premise. It's fiction. It's science fiction. And it's fantastic. A book out now that a lot of people love is The Martian, which is being made into a movie about a guy trapped on Mars. And there's a lot of technology involved, but the core premise of being trapped or being marooned is something we can all relate to. And there actually was a movie about that called Robinson Crusoe on Mars, which actually had Adam West in it as well. So it's an interesting premise. Um, I don't think this book and this new movie will have a Martian monkey, much to the loss of everybody. But I'm sure it's still going to be great. I want to do this when I can find that right entry point into getting into that, I think I'll do that. But it has to be a story that I think will appeal to people who would not normally be attracted to science fiction. One of my heroes, and uh, this is a question I've been asked here too, is who am I inspired by? Um, Michael Crichton is a guy that could take science and science fiction but make them fit into thrillers and not sci-fi. So that's a goal one day. Alicia wants to know, do I have a must-have item, food or drink or lucky charm when I sit down to write? The answer is yes. If I find out that I don't want to sit down at the keyboard and I come up with a lot of excuses, I walk across the street, I buy myself some red vines, maybe some Skittles, and I sit them down at the computer. It's junk food. I use junk food to motivate myself. The upside is that probably after a few hours of writing, I'll want to think things through. So I'll get up and I'll go walk for a couple hours and hopefully burn off those calories. I don't recommend that to everybody, but comfort foods are my motivation. Red vines, that's my heroin. That is my writer's vice. I don't drink, I don't do drugs. I eat red vines. And when my editor wants to motivate me, sometimes there's a knock on my door and the UPS person delivers a big box of red vines, which is telling Andrew it's time to sit down and write. It's the way I perceive it. I'll answer one more question. And that is from T. Gosa, who wants to know which writers influence your writing the most, specifically for Angel Killer. So here's the funny thing. When I set out to write Public Enemy Zero, my first full-length novel, I had in my mind a couple of writers that I thought I was being influenced by, and I ended up writing something, nothing like they would have written, nothing like their style or whatever, and that was Stephen King and Michael Crichton. I kind of had in my head there like those two writers. I said, these are people who are very, very different stylistically, very, very different, but appeal to me in certain ways. And I said, well, let me try approaching it that way and the end result was an Andrew Main book that's what happened is that I made the choices I would make and not the choices they would make you might see some influences there but ultimately just was going to be my voice when I set out to write Angel Killer I looked at a lot of different books in the genre of like serial killers and crime thriller and somebody who I love is Thomas Harris who wrote Red Dragon, Silence of the Lambs and Hannibal but he's very much a very different kind of writer than I am. The way he tells a story is he's an amazing writer. I'm a guy just trying to get started, so I don't mean trying to compare myself to him. But I would say that certainly his use of the environment and the way that he described the technology and procedures I paid attention to. But end of the day, you can start off saying, I like the way somebody does this, but you're not going to be them. I'm not going to be Thomas Harris. I can't write like him. I can't write like Michael Crichton or Stephen King. I'm only going to be able to tell things through the way I tell them. And the more I try to get away from that, the less strong my voice and my writing style will be. And so often I may be influenced by something from a starting point, but at the end of the day, it's going to be me. And that's the best way for it to work out. If you have any questions, you can ask me on Twitter, just at ReplyMe and use the hashtag AskMain.